Okay, so we're going to start off the second week of the respiratory system by talking about Dalton's law and Henry's law. Okay, so we've got one objective. You really could say it's two, but it's the same objective just for two different laws. So the first one we're going to talk about is Dalton's law. And so Dalton's law just simply states the total pressure of a mixture of gases is the sum of the individual gas pressures. So for example, in the atmosphere, the, there are there is nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, argon, water, and a few other things. Well, the total pressure of the atmosphere is the individual is the sum of the individual pressures. So atmospheric pressure equals the pressure of nitrogen plus the pressure of oxygen plus the pressure of CO2 plus the pressure of water and anything else. All right. So we're going to do some math. If atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, and that's how we generally measure it, and the inspired air is 79% ox or nitrogen, and then we've got these other values for nitrogen or oxygen, carbon dioxide. What is the partial pressure of each gas? So I want you to pause for a minute, see if you can calculate this. So if you've done the math, let's see what you've got. So nitrogen would be about 600. Oxygen would be about 159. Carbon dioxide is 0.3 and other is 0.42. Now, one of the things I want to point out here is that nitrogen, or excuse me, carbon dioxide, just think of this as zero. Okay, there is essentially no carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Yes, there's four one hundredths of a percent, and that makes a big deal for a lot of things um, when you think of climate change and stuff like that. However, when it comes to breathing or respiration or what's inside your body, you're not breathing anything in that makes any difference. Okay, to have enough carbon dioxide in the atmosphere where it would actually affect your breathing, um, the world would be on fire. Like, let's, it would have to be like 5% or something. It would have to be a huge amount and we would all be burned to a crisp. Okay, now the way that we calculated each of these, so nitrogen, for example, we just went 760 times 0 0.79. I really need to get an Apple pencil here. Okay. And that gets us to 600.44. And we did the 760 times 20.9 to get the 158 and so on and so forth. Okay. But I want you to remember that it doesn't matter where you're at on earth, the percentages of the atmosphere or the gases that compose the atmosphere are the same. So even on top of Everest, it's 20, almost 21% oxygen. The problem is the barometric pressure is only about 250. So there's less than a third of the amount of air on top of Everest that there is here in Terre Haute. That's what makes it so difficult. Okay. The lower in elevation, the greater the pressure, just like the lower you are on a water bottle or in a pool, the diver, the deeper you are, the more pressure it is because you've got the weight of everything above you. So we've got more math. Okay. So let's just say the atmospheric pressure is still 760, but we've changed the partial pressures. So we've got 560 for nitrogen, 150 for oxygen, 47 for water. So what proportion does each contribute to the overall pressure? And so the answer is that the answers are these. And so the way that we did that for nitrogen, we just went 560 divided by 760. Okay. And that equals that number there. And we did 150 divided by 760 to get the 19.7 and so on and so forth. So that's, that's uh, Dalton's law. Then we've got Henry's law. And so Henry's law states that the amount of dissolved gas in a liquid is proportional to the partial pressure above of the gas touching the liquid. So an easy way to think about this is, let's say you got a swimming pool and for whatever reason you put a fog machine and let's just say there's a whole bunch of CO2 in the fog and you, you uh, shoot the fog over your pool. Well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna increase the amount of CO2 that's contained in the pool. All right, so how does this apply to physiology? Well, external respiration, remember that's getting air from the atmosphere into your lungs. The amount of oxygen that dissolves into your plasma is determined specifically by the amount of oxygen that's in the air that you're breathing in. Okay, so as a result, in Terre Haute, you'll have more oxygen dissolved in your plasma than you will on top of Everest. Okay, we can do the same thing for internal respiration, but this time talking about CO2. So the amount of CO2 that's in your bloodstream is dependent on how much your tissues are producing. Okay, and so for example, if you exercise, you're going to be producing more CO2 in your legs than you are in your intestines. And so the, the blood that's leaving your legs will have a high pressure of CO2 compared to that that's leaving your intestines. And with that, we'll end Dalton's Law and Henry's Law.